I'm going to do a demo of what I would like you to do when you're turning in um, one of your videos for the Code Wars modules. So you'll see that um, if we go to, let's say, 8th Q to 7th Q, module 5, I've added some text here to help clarify what I want from you for this assignment. And whether you're using path one or path two, which is up to you, I'll let you read it on your own time. Either way, you're going to be required to record uh, a short video in which you solve a problem as if you'd been given that problem in a coding interview. So we're practicing your, your interview skills here for a technical interview for a software engineering position. So what I say here is you should explain the problem, explain your solution, jot it down in comments, and then translate your pseudocode into Java. That's the, that's the broad arc of what you're going to do in any of these videos, and I'm going to try to do it for you now. And uh, just to let you know, I haven't prepped here. You're allowed to prep as much as you want. I, I don't care if you, you essentially memorize the solution and write down a script. As long as it sounds like you understand what you're doing, that's okay. I just want you to you know, practice the skill of writing and talking uh, at the same time while you're being recorded and watched because that's how it will be in an interview. But for me, I, I actually have not prepped, so I'm about to press train and do this credit card mask um, problem because it's the next challenge, but I, I haven't seen it before. Uh, so hopefully this will be kind of authentic. I'll have to actually solve it um, in real time in front of you. I might make mistakes, I might have to fix them, and that's, that's okay. That's actually okay for you too in your video. Um, as a result, we might run more than five minutes. Um, you're allowed to run more than five minutes too. I know I said, it has to be five minutes. That's just what you should shoot for. And if you're prepping beforehand, I think you could probably achieve that. But I might go longer. Who knows? Let's see. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to press train. <clears throat> okay. So, credit card mask. Let me read the problem first. So usually when you buy something, you're asked whether your credit card number, phone number, or... Oh, okay, so I thought it was ordered incorrectly. You're asked whether your phone number, credit card number, or answer to your most secret question is still correct. However, since someone could look over your shoulder, we don't want that shown on your screen. Instead, we mask it. Your task is to write a function, maskify, which changes all but the last four characters into a pound sign. Okay, usually, usually, I find the examples much clearer than the text. In fact, this whole this whole sentence or this whole paragraph I feel like is not helpful for the problem, but this this is useful. Change all the last four characters into pound signs. And now here's an example of some long credit card and then uh, everything becomes a pound except for the last four digits. Same with this one. And then these are some interesting cases. If it's less than four digits, I guess it just gets returned unchanged. <clears throat> um, and then if it's, it I guess it doesn't matter if it's numbers or letters, either way, still we, we mask out everything except for the last four digits. And it could be something super long like this, actually. Oh yes, yes, right, this is, yes, four digits, or not digits, letters. So it's letters or digits, doesn't matter. They're all characters, so the last four characters are going to stay the same. Everything else, whether it's a space, number, whatever, turns into a pound sign. So I think that makes sense. And then we have uh, the code that actually tests the problems over here. We see the same ones. Yes, okay. All right, all that makes sense. So here we have public class maskify and public static string. Maskify is what we're going to implement. If we run it now, move myself out of the way here. If we run it now, it should should fail with this unsupported operation exception uh, unimplemented. Yep, so everything, all the tests fail. That's it's expected at right now, so that's all good. But um, let's, uh, let's start writing some pseudocode for how we would solve this problem. I think the easiest way to do it, or at least the way that comes to mind for me, is to, um, so we're processing this string. I'm gonna say, uh, make a new string, uh, which 
will store our uh, masked um, content and last four characters of str. And then we'll I'll, I'll loop over str, loop over str, adding uh, characters to um, our new string. But I'll stop that loop before we get to the last four characters. Which reminds me, we should probably make this new string start out as equal to str, so that as we loop over it, adding our pound signs will be left at the end, as long as we stop early, stop before the last four characters. As long as we stop early, we'll have the last four um, still there. So set this equal to str from the start. And then after that, we'll return uh, the new string, which will now have uh, pound signs masking out most of it. Okay, so just just to pause for a second here, this uh, what I've done is I explained the problem, and then I exp explained my solution. I jotted it down in comments or pseudocode. So I've done steps one and two. And now, now we're ready for step three, which is where I'm going to translate it into Java. Here we go. Okay, so I know that in Java we make new strings like this. So I'm going to call it new string. And I'm going to set it equal to str to start with. And <clears throat> we know that we make four loops like this. So I'll start that right here. I'll say int i is 0. And then i is less than something. We really want it to stop for before the end of str. So I think a good stab at that would be something like str.length minus 4. Might be off by 1. We could probably think about it a little bit and make sure that we're not. Maybe this needs to be an equal sign. But I'm just going to show you, you don't always have to figure all that stuff out right away. It's OK if you press attempt and the answer is not quite right and you have to debug it. That's OK. So just, just to show you that, I'm going to not think too much about whether this is correct or not. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to put in something that's probably wrong. Let's just pretend I put in it's totally wrong. That's okay. Even in an interview, interviewers don't care if you sometimes get something wrong, as long as by the end you've debugged it all. So it's okay to have a mistake in your code. It can be there for a long time, as long as you eventually catch it. So make it. I'll make it really wrong. Let's let's make it def. That can't be right, right? I'm just gonna put it in there. Just pretend I accidentally made that um, that mistake. Anyway, I plus uh, plus, and then I'm gonna say. Um, new str i equals uh, pound sign. I think that's how you set a character in a string in Java. I don't know, actually. Let's find out. And then at the end, I'm going to return new str. Well, let's see what we get. I'm going to move, my, move myself to right here, press attempt. Uh, right, right, right. Okay, so this is actually not how you set a string in Java. You can't just set a character in a string like this. So what we have to do is something more like, um, so we take, we're trying to update new string. So we want to take everything in new string, uh, basically the substring uh, from the beginning up to our current index i, and then say that that will be followed now by a pound sign, and then it will be preceded by everything after that index. So again, the substring of new string, starting from i, uh, going to the end. And I uh, might actually need a plus one there with that 
that would be correct. Um, but let's find out. Again, we already know there's at least one error in here. Uh, maybe there's another one, but that's for debugging. That's we'll, we'll solve that in another pass at the end. Oh, all right. Well, we actually passed some tests. Interesting. Uh, so we pass test empty, which was, sorry, I pressed I pressed attempt and it ran it against the hidden test. What you really want to do is press test and it runs it against these tests that you can actually see. There we go. Yeah, that makes more sense. So, so now we can see how we're handling these, this input right here. So it expected this, but it was this. So we're off by something. We're off by about three. Oh, well maybe, maybe it's because this number is wrong. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. Ah, oh, well there it is. Uh, so yes, so that, that passed. Um, that passed all of the um, tests here in test solution. Let's press attempt and see if that works. Okay, there we go. So that, that is the A correct solution. That is one correct solution for this problem. It's not the only one. It, uh, in fact, adding kind of restructuring strings like this uh, might be easier. Here, I'll, I'll add as, as notes for possible improvements. Um, uh, could use a string builder here. Uh, if you know that you're going to have to make a lot of changes to some string, then a string builder is a Java uh, class that uh, that you can use for doing that. Um, but you're under no obligation for this assignment to try to solve this in the best way or the shortest way. In fact, I would prefer you to solve it with simple tools like simple for loops and um, simple data structures like strings using their simple classic uh, interface. Uh, in this case, the methods on them like uh, like substring. But really, it's up to you. Um, in fact, you're, it's there's nothing wrong with this. This is not cheating, by the way. If you want to solve, if you want to submit your videos in this way, it's okay. You can look at the solution. Um, you can you can look at pick whatever solution you want. Hey, look at this one. This one's this one's kind of nice. Um, if you pick one of these. All you have to do is try your, you have to research it and understand it. So if you, if you picked this one and you do your video it, and that's what you're going to write for your code, you better understand what all this stuff is because you need to be writing out your, uh, your pseudocode and your thought process for how you're solving it. Um, and so that means in this case, if you're going to use replace all, then you need to know what's going on right there. I know what's going on right there, but if, uh, if you submit a video and it seems like you didn't understand the code, then you might have missed the point of the assignment, which is that you're allowed to prep for these interview problems, but you actually have to have done some legwork to understand the solutions. Uh, because your job in an interview is to convince the interviewer that you know how to code, which means you understand the solutions that you're coming up with. So try to convince me as best you can. You can always schedule office hours or meetings uh, with me or send me messages and ask questions if there's some thing in one of these uh, solutions you don't understand. All of that is perfectly fine as prep work before your video. So with, with that in mind, let's just do one more just so you can get a feel for, for another problem. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do another one. It's going to be every square digit pressing train. Once again, I haven't seen this problem before, so I'm going to solve it for you raw here. Welcome. In this kata, you're asked to square every digit of a number and concatenate them. For example, if we run 9199 through the function, 811181 will come out because 9 squared is 81 and 1 squared is 1. I see. So the 9 gets squared and that becomes this 81. The 1 gets squared and that becomes the 1. Same thing with the second one and then the last nine becomes this 81. The function accepts an integer and returns an integer. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, so I'd say our, our first, first job here is to start separating out each integer, each digit in the integer. So separate out the uh, digits. <clears throat> In fact, we want to loop over the digits uh, 
in n. And then for each one, we want to square it. Square the digit. And then we want to concatenate them all together at the end. But maybe the best thing to do first is to put them into some array to store them. And then we can, we can concatenate them later. Or we put them into a string and store them. But we need to turn that string into an integer at the end because this function returns an integer. Hmm. They would both work. I guess we could just try one, and then if it doesn't work, or if we get some friction, we can pivot to the other. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, I'll say, uh, create a string to store the concatenated digits. Um, and then at the end, convert string to int and return. So that lets me say square the digit um, and put it into our string. And then I think we're, we're good. I think that should do it. So if we create a string to store the concatenated digits, then we loop over the digits in n, which, by the way, is, that might be a little bit tricky in itself, but we'll come back to that. Square the digit and put it into our string. OK. Yeah, I think we're ready to start coding. Let's find out. So we'll say string s equals, I guess I'll set it to nothing, just an empty string to start with. And then we want to loop over the digits in in, squaring them and putting them into our string. So that's actually a, that's an interesting thing, is let's say we want to get just the 9 off of this, this number. The trick I know is to divide by 10 and take the remainder. That should give us 9. But then we need to separate that off from the rest of the number so that we're processing one digit at a time. So we may have to do something like while while n is greater than 10, so I'm going to start whittling down in digit by digit. And at the very end, we're going to get just a 9, because that'll be the last digit. And at that point, it'll be not greater than 10 anymore. Well, but we still have one digit to deal with in that case. OK, so let's say while it's greater than 0. Maybe we get it down to 0 in the end. Um, So if we're looping over the digits in n, whittling down n the whole time, I think we need to get the uh, first digit off of n. That would be, I guess, this digit right here. Since this is tricky enough, I know, you know we have other stuff we're supposed to do in here, square it and put it into strings. But I just want to make sure we get this loop correct first. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get that digit. So let's say int digit equals n, and then we want to divide it by 10 and take the remainder. So that would be modding uh, n by 10. And then we're, since we're inside of a loop that's checking the value of n, we also need to update n. Say maybe n is in n equals n divided by 10. And since Java does integer division, it should should throw away um, should throw away anything um, that doesn't divide evenly, I think. But since I'm not sure, uh, let's let's just do a double check before we get too far. 
let's do system out print line um, digit is digit and I'll do the same thing for n just so we can see how our loop is behaving before we do anything else um, okay, missing a return statement, right? So let's say just return zero for now. I know it's wrong, but we just need to get it to run. Okay, uh, you know what? That actually, that looks like it's working. So first we get the digit nine, and then n becomes nine one one, and then we get the digit one, n becomes nine one, we get the digit one again, n becomes nine, and then we get the digit nine, and then n is zero, and then we're done. So we've successfully gotten the digits off one at a time, off of n. And that was, I think that's actually the hard part of this uh, this problem. So the hard part's getting done, now we just need to square it and concatenate it and stuff like that. So I think we're ready to, to solve the rest of it now, now that we've done this math trick to get the digits. So our, our, um, our comments here help lead the way, good thing we wrote those. So we will square the digit, so we say, you know, digit times digit and then we want to put it into our string. So let's say int squared digit equals this. And then how do we put it into our string? Well, also where do we want to put it into our string? We want to put it on the end of our string because we're processing the end of the digits. We're processing the number n from the end. So we want to say something like s equals s plus squared digit and then I would like to print out s right here again I'm doing this before I bother with converting it into an end because I'm just not sure if it's right I just want to make sure that uh, s is getting getting constructed the way I, I expect it to so let's see I uh, forgot a semicolon, always. <laughs> uh, it looks right. That's right. That That's that's at least the string version of the answer we're expecting. 811181. Now we just need to turn that into um, an integer. Now, if you, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know how to do that. Sometimes I forget these things too and have to look them up. Um, but that's something you would do before your video um, to make it seem like you just know you're just a Java expert. You already you already knew how to do it. So um, I happen to know it's integer dot parse int I think of s. Let's see. Mm. Let's try commenting that out. Oh. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So it doesn't like my parse int in this case. I see. I see. I see. I think it's getting past this case here. I think. Let's see, let's print out S, press test again, yeah, 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 okay. So in this test for the 811181, it's logging that, and I, I believe it's probably parsing the int and returning it just fine, but for this case, when n is 0, starts out as 0, then S here is the empty string and this while loop never runs s is still the empty string and then it tries to parse int of s um, and it doesn't know how to convert that into um, into a number so i think we can just handle that case separate like specially in fact maybe we can just handle that up here if that's the if that's the only special case let's just say if in is zero return zero 
We don't need to go into our fancy logic if it's just uh, an easy special case. So let's try that. Okay, that seems to be working. All right. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with that. So let's try attempting it. See if it works on all of the hidden tests. Ooh, didn't. Didn't. Hmm, all right, what do we got? So in this case, it expected 9, 4, 1, 4, but it was 4, 1, 4, 9. Is it backwards? It certainly looks like it's backwards. 9, 4, 1, 4, 9, 4, 1, 4. And is this the case here as well? 8, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 6. 8, 1, 2, 5. Three six one. What if we uh, what if we just did this wrong? Still passes our local tests, and then it passes. How do we get that backwards? So this is right. So we got it right, but actually I'm, I'm a little puzzled. Did I misunderstand this? If you start out with some number, one, two, three, four, and you have some string that is this, let's say n is this, and then you process this one digit at a time. So the first thing that'll happen is process four, which means we square it and we stick it onto string. So then s string is going to equal 16. And then next, process 3, because that's this digit. Uh, so we square it, and that's 9. And the question is, where do you want that squared digit to go? Should it go here? Or should it go here? And the answer is we want it to go here. So we want everything we've done before, whatever string was previously in the previous iteration, we want that to be on the right of the processed digit, the newly processed digit. And that's, that's what this code does right here. So S, the previous state of the string, comes on the right of the newly processed digit. Um, so the way we did it is correct, which we already knew because that's what the way it was, it was passing the tests. But um, but the first time I wrote it, I thought about it the wrong way. I had some some error in my thinking that uh, that I um, I wanted to correct, and uh, that's what I would encourage you to do. If if at any point you're surprised by your solution or by the uh, by the answers or um, by what your solution does when it gets run on the hidden tests. At any point while you're doing this coding practice, if you run into things you don't understand, you should you should try try your best to sit down and understand them because you know debugging your uh, your own misunderstandings is the way that you're gonna level up as a computer scientist in in general. So uh, so I try to do that whenever I I make a mistake. Think think through deeply what. What did I do wrong? Even though I got the problem right, by the way. Even though I got the problem right, there's some part of it that I didn't understand. So I wanted to think through it. Now, you're not under any obligation to do that in your videos that you submit, but I would recommend you do it in your personal practice. So <clears throat> with that in mind, we've done, uh, we've done two, or I've done two um, roughly, I think, seventh Q problems. And um, I'll note that <clears throat> these all, both of these problems dealt with very simple data structures, strings and ints. Those are the most, that's as complicated as it got. Strings and ints with some if statements. This one's got a while loop. The last problem had a for loop. Uh, we got a mod and a div and, and an integer parse int. 
I think, I think that 95% of that, if not 100% of that, is stuff you have seen before. You've, I bet you've seen every one of these things. You've seen a public int function, you've seen functions with parameters, you've seen if statements, you've seen checking if a number equals another, you've seen return statements, you've seen strings as variables, you've seen while loops, you've seen inequalities, you've seen modulus, you've seen div, um, you've seen squaring a number, um, and you've seen concatenating the string, and, and maybe the one thing you maybe hadn't seen before, maybe, because this might not have been in Java 1, you might not have seen integer parse int. But everything else, I think you've seen it all. But I still bet that many of you would still struggle with this problem because it just takes a lot of practice to put together everything you've seen before so that you can solve problems with it. That's that is a mountain to climb. It takes a lot of effort, so don't feel bad if you um, if you're struggling with these code war wars problems at first. Um, it will get better with practice, and that's why I've put two paths into the um, into the module because I know that some of you might not be able to reach the level that that I'm putting up there as the goal for the module, and if you just can't get to it because the problems are too tricky, um, that's okay. That that is totally fine. Just now is the time to start practicing. So you get to use path two, which is where you submit videos of yourself solving problems, which means you need to actually look at some solutions, think about them, think about how you can understand them well enough to record a video where you talk about them uh, without referencing any notes and stuff like that. Um, how, how would you make it look like you understand, um, which, which means you need to actually be able to understand it uh, well enough to remember it as you're doing the video. Um, so the, even path two might be challenging for some of you, but I'm here to help. Um, so um, yes, happy, happy coding. Uh, I, I know this is going to be a challenge for many of you, but uh, I promise it'll be rewarding in the fact that it will make you a much, much better coder. And uh, when you get to a, the point in your career where you're interviewing for a software engineering job, you will have considerably less anxiety when it comes to being interviewed um, about your coding skills. It's something that a lot of coders dread. In fact, every computer science undergraduate, um, anyone who's ever graduated with the degree that I've ever talked to, dreads the coding interview because it tends to be the case that you don't practice coding in coursework nearly as much as a lot of people do when they're prepping for interviews. So um, I hope this I hope this video was helpful and I'm looking forward to seeing your videos. Reach out to me if you're struggling at all. Um, as always, I'm here to help.